Welcome to the Ice Guys, presented by National Hockey Now, Wednesday, October 19th. Ian Cameron, Alex P. Smith with you, ready for another NHL card. Uh, I'm slowly starting to get the voice turn in a corner. Slowly. We're getting there. We're not all the way back just yet. but A little more tea and lemon. A little more tea and lemon, a little less ranting. And we won't do as much as we did yesterday. And we were a little upset with some of the shit that went down on Monday night. I was much happier with the way things went down uh, last night uh, in the NHL, which is a great segue into getting the show going, talking about last night's uh, big Tuesday slate. A lot of fascinating matchups. We've got to start in Ottawa just because of what a wild uh, game that was. Uh, back and forth it went. Uh, Ottawa with that, I guess, somewhat predictable start that they could jump on a Boston Bruins team playing the second of back-to-back games, a Bruin team that was shorthanded once again last night uh, on the blue line when you look at who was missing. Matt Grizzlick, Charlie McAvoy, Brandon Carlo, three of your six starting defensemen not in the lineup for Boston last night. And you could kind of tell a rested uh, Ottawa Senators team uh, playing their home opener after two losses on the road uh, to begin the season. They were ready. Uh, from the opening puck drop. It didn't hurt their cause either that they had the legend, Daniel Alfredson, uh, come out before the game uh, and drop the uh, uh, ceremonial face-off there uh, early in the game. And uh, Ottawa was definitely jumping early, yet they let Boston right back into the game. They tied it 3-3. The lead evaporated, and then Ottawa strikes for the next three goals and goes back up by three. So it was 3-0, 3-3, 6-3. And then Boston comes back and trims the lead down to one before the second period ends. And it ended up 6-5 going into the third. But finally, Ottawa tightened things up at long last defensively. They scored the only goal of the third, and they prevail 7-5 in a wild one uh, over the uh, Boston Bruins. Uh, The New Jersey Devils, well, it was just more of the same after the first period where, you know, you're worried, Uh uh-oh, here we go again. But credit to them, they rallied the troops and they battled back for me. 2-0 2-0 deficit against the Anaheim Ducks and take a 4-2 victory uh, in that game. Uh, the Columbus Blue Jackets uh, hand the Vancouver Canucks a fourth straight loss. And now the NHL history that we were already talking about yesterday, Alex, they're on the wrong side of it. It's just gotten worse now uh, for the Vancouver Canucks. They made history becoming the first team in NHL history to lose each of their first three regular season games, blowing a multi-goal lead. Well, make it the first team in NHL history to lose their first four regular season games, blowing a multi-goal lead. Nothing changed whatsoever. The only difference is they actually got a point uh, this time around against Columbus, but they lose uh, in overtime by a score of four uh, four to three. It's just a crisis of confidence right now uh, defensively with protecting leads for the Vancouver Canucks, and we saw it again uh, last night. Uh, The Islanders roar past still winless San Jose, uh, five to two. Uh, we saw the uh, LA Kings. Uh, what a comeback by them. What a grit, gritty, gutsy comeback. I mean, back to back on the road. They're now three and zero on this road trip. They beat Nashville four three in a shootout rally from behind. Gabe Velarde scores a goal and gets the only goal in the shootout uh, to win that game for the Kings. Uh, I talked about that guy multiple times when we've talked about LA. Uh, he is someone to keep an eye on in terms of props as well. He's gotten off to a terrific start this season. The Buffalo Sabres, a terrific win for them, 4-2 to two over the Edmonton Oilers. And I said on Twitter, it's not going to be the last time Buffalo's going to pull a major upset. They are going to be capable of doing this uh, throughout the course of the season. What a goal by Tage Thompson. Outstanding. If you, uh, if you didn't watch that game or didn't see the highlight, make sure you look at that goal. It was outstanding. Great individual effort. The fact that a guy six foot six, 220 pounds, can move like that so swiftly on his skates, uh, just weave, bob and weave and uh, move and sachet, as a uh, great Doc Emmerich would say, sachet, swagger, uh, as he would say as well, through the defense. Uh, just outstanding uh, individual effort by Tage Thompson and a great performance in net from Eric Comrie, you know, who I said, give this guy some opportunity in net instead of the old man winter, uh, Craig Anderson. And I think Buffalo's got something there. I think he's he can be capable. And he was phenomenal, especially in the third period when Edmonton was making their push uh, in that game. A nice win for the Sabres and the Flyers. How about them? 3-2 against Tampa. They remain undefeated. This one, the most shocking of all, that they were down uh, 2-0 in this game, and they come back and score three unanswered. They are playing their ass off every night for torts. I have now watched extensive portions of all Philly games so far. 
They are committing to defense. They're committing away from the puck to playing the right way. And they are just battling. They don't want, they don't lose one-on-one puck battles very easily. If at all, we are seeing that right now from the Philadelphia Flyers. And that's what it's going to take for them. You know, they're still an undermanned roster, but the work ethic is overcoming that right now. Great start. And they've responded to Torts and Torts has a knack of doing this. When he first takes over a team, the team responds and we're seeing that right now. And the last game to get to Calgary, great comeback for a lot of us. A lot of us like Calgary last night. Uh, Flames and regulation was my uh, best bet on the show. And they erase a two, nothing deficit and win three to two. And that's now two games in a row. Alex, you want to talk about why this team can win a Stanley cup. That's two games in a row where they've had a one goal lead. Edmonton pulled the goalie for the extra attacker. Vegas did last night, and that's two games in a row. They've barely given that those teams a sniff with the extra attacker. They barely had a quality look, you know, to try to tie that game. It was a great defensive effort by Calgary in both of those games to close it out and, and uh, preserve the one goal victory. So credit to Calgary there, Alex. A crazy Tuesday night. What were your thoughts? Yeah, it was, and it's interesting. We'll start with Philly because that's the game I, I watched all. Well, I watched both of the ESPN games all the way through, and then flipped through the others, but. Uh, you know, just shocking to see, you know, the call that, that we were right on about Tampa Bay just not being in sorts early. Uh, combined with Philly, like I said, they're buying into the Torts' system. They're they're putting in the, the work and the effort. And like you said, this is a, a, a Torts kind of tradition. Wherever he goes, they buy into what he's saying at the very beginning. It's just that how long does that last? How long before they tune him out uh, and, and before guys get worn down from the system? So, you know, obviously it's still the first week, uh, you know, everyone's still fresh and everyone's buying in and they're catching teams in the right spots and they're able to cash. And I thought it was really interesting because as that's going on, we see Vancouver, like you said, blow another two goal lead. And I go, Hmm, isn't it interesting how Philadelphia as bad as they were last year, they go on and get rid of Mike Yo and all of a sudden they're three and O and then where does Mike Yo land Vancouver? And what happens in Vancouver? <laughs> they make history of blowing four straight, That's two true. or more goalies. Isn't that I had totally forgotten. I just, I just find Vancouver. that fascinating how that just happened. Same way where he left Minnesota, all of a sudden Minnesota <laughs> becomes a better hockey team. Just seems like wherever this guy, you know, he leaves St. Louis, St. Louis wins the Stanley Cup. Maybe Mike Yo's the problem, huh? I don't know. I've maybe been saying that for about three years now, but. Hey, you know, uh, there's other issues at Vancouver's guy. It's not just it's not just Mike. Yo, the guys on the ice have to do the job too. And yeah. you know, it looked like they came out hot. I said first period was the way to look at them yesterday. They they did the job in the first 20 minutes, but the last 35, 40 is where they start to struggle. And they've got to find a way to to, to overcome this. And it's not going to get any easier because they're about to go into a hungry and salacious XL Energy Center with a, a wild team desperate for a win. So they're putting themselves in, in, a, in a really bad hole right now. And then when you talk about Vegas playing better, you talk about Calgary showing that determination and grit of being a team that could, like I said, be a cup contender because they play that solid lockdown defense in the last 20 minutes. Vancouver can learn a little bit from Calgary on how to play some third period defense for sure. Uh, Boston, Ottawa, I mean, like I said, this is the Ottawa team we, we were waiting to see. We, we know we weren't going to necessarily see it opening night, but we're waiting to see these 7-5, 6-4, 6-5 games from Ottawa because they have the horses offensively. They're going to struggle defensively, especially now with no Talbot, it's, you know, the Helberg and Forsberg combo. Uh, but, you know, if they can out, outgun a team, they have chances to win. So, you know, they're going to lose some of these uh, boat races. They're going to win some of them. And, and Boston – I mean, give them credit for the, the you know guys that they're still missing and the guys that are banged up to you know even hold court. Like I said, have the three goal trade offs back and forth, and it sucked for me because my uh, favorite live book bet online has had issues, and I don't know if anyone else has tried to use uh, BOL for live plays. They're having some server issues. I actually talked to Dave Mason uh, this morning. And he said that they're working on that. He said it might actually take a week or even two weeks before they get it done. But uh, they've been having issues with all sports live. So, uh, you know, that's why it's all important to have multiple outs. I, I don't really have another out that I trust for live betting as often. But I'm going to have to kind of make that that venture. So if you were able to live bet next to score with these with that Boston-Ottawa trend, uh, props to you. Because that, that seems like the way Ottawa is going to play games. It's not only going to be high scoring, but it's going to be, uh, you know, a boxing match. They're going to have the counter punches and the jabs. Uh, right back and forth and, and play that kind of up and down tempo style. Yeah, I I had totally forgotten that Mike Yo was brought on board the Vancouver Canuck coaching staff by Bruce Boudreaux. He's an assistant there now. Mm-hmm. 
I'll, I'll be damned. <laughs> Holy fuck. I mean, I, I'd totally forgotten. And of course, last the last two years, I mean, what was the record? 17. Yeah, se- I'm seeing it now. 17 and 43 was mm-hmm. his head coaching record with Philadelphia. Uh, Mike Yo gets fired, obviously, after uh, last year's just disaster. Uh, fired in St. Louis. And then you're right, they win the Stanley Cup <laughs> with Lube, uh that same season. Philly is a defensive sieve. Last year with Yo gets fired. Torts, they look like they're at least competing defensively. He goes to Vancouver now, and they're breaking down left and right, letting no, forgetting that Alex Ovechkin's on the ice. You know, only the guy that's been crushing the league for 16 years. And here's Sounds the crazy like thing, too. Well, here's the crazy thing, too. He's usually the guy who's all about preaching defense. His teams are always so defensive heavy that they even forget to play offense. So you think. You know, okay, fine. You know, the same thing in the Philly. Well, okay, they bring him in to be the defensive specialist to work on the penalty kill. Maybe that's just the lane he needs to stay in. And he still hasn't been able to figure that out. So, I, you know, like I said, he's he's arguably one of the, if not the worst coach in the league. Well, that's the thing. He's a defensive specialist. I don't see anything special about the Canuck defense right yeah. now. So what right. kind of specialist are you? <laughs> exactly. Not much of one. That's what it looks like to me. I mean, holy goodness. Uh, talk about it. It's, I think there's uh, – you can't just say it's all yo, but my goodness. The, the, the It's not a total coincidence either that what right. we're seeing here. And like I said, it's not just necessarily where he goes, everything's bad. It's where he leaves, everything turns around for the better so <laughs> far. Obviously, we're not going to say Philly's going to be a playoff team now because of that, but it's just an odd coincidence. It is odd coincidence, exactly. Well, you've been saying it for years, and if you're just new to the ice guys this season, Alex B. Smith is uh, king of the uh, Mikey O fan club. Of course, I'm joking. No, he's the anti uh, <laughs> Mikey O fan club man. He has been not a fan of Mikey O from day one. If yeah. there was a slogan like a election slogan for Mikey O and Alex B. Smith's world, be be just say no to yo. Exactly, that's what yes. it would be. <laughs> uh, and uh, unfortunately, the Vancouver Canucks did not say no to him, and uh, their defense is pretty bad right now. Yeah. And following a pattern of yo teams where Philly's defense sucked, and when before he got fired, the Blues were losing their way in in their own zone, and that that's supposed to be a specialty, but there's been nothing special about defensive efforts from yo teams the last uh, several years. So it is fascinating. I mean, uh, and I, you know, some, it's, you know, it's a a 32 team league. There's going to be situations where you lose track or don't uh, stay on top of every single member of a team's coaching staff. Like I know all the team's head coaches front to back, obviously, but you know, every member of the assistant coaching staff, you're not always going to remember who's who, but I I had totally blanked on Mike Yobians brought on by the Vancouver Canucks now as an assistant to Bruce uh, there. So incredible, just incredible. (laughs) And like I say, it's not a total coincidence either. There's something to it that look, the O teams have had issues defensively and now he goes to Vancouver and they're having those issues uh, as well. Uh, We've all right. That was the uh, Tuesday uh, recap. Let's get to Wednesday's card as usual with the Wednesday slate. It's a very light slate. Two of the three games tonight are the TNT uh, Wednesday night double header. Uh, So we'll start with the first game of that. TNT doubleheader, Philadelphia Flyers, Florida Panthers, Panthers minus 350 home favorites here in this game, six and a half the total, uh, pretty much across the board uh, entering this contest. This looks to me a lot from a situational standpoint like Boston last night in Ottawa for the uh, Philadelphia Flyers where, you know, you're playing on a back-to-back, you played Tampa Bay and they come back, they have the big three to two victory over the lightning and as we just stated a great effort from this team that's battling defensively that's playing the right way away from the puck and it's no coincidence that it's making Carter Hart's job easier and it's making him look better because of the fact this team is just looking somewhat more structured and coherent you know at the defensive end of the ice that's the big change we've seen early on and you look if Philly's going to continue to win games they are going to have to bring it like that in terms of their work ethic, in terms of their effort, in terms of their compete level on a nightly basis. They're going to have to bring it that way because they are still very much outmanned by teams like Tampa, but they can overcome it with good defensive structure and the work ethic they did last night. But now you're on a second of back-to-back games uh, on the road. It's very difficult to sweep these Florida two-game road trips historically Uh, for a lot of teams. So it's not going to be easy here. Florida obviously rested uh, since Monday when they lost 5-3, their first loss of the season uh, to the Boston Bruins. So they'll be looking to bounce back. They've got the uh, rest advantage. However, we got some issues with Florida in terms of personnel and cluster injuries on the blue line. 
And we saw what that did to the Boston Bruins last night uh, in their game against the Ottawa Senators. Multiple defensive injuries, especially to key members uh, of that blue line, that can really hurt a team's chemistry, communication, and that's when breakdowns can happen defensively in your own zone. That's when pucks get turned over because all of a sudden you're playing with different pairings that you're not accustomed to. So the fact the Florida Panthers, you know, they had to put Aaron Ekblad, uh, you know, one week into the season here uh, on long-term injury reserve. I mean, that's unfortunate for the uh, Panthers. Uh, he's got a lower body injury, huge blow. And it looks like because, <coughs> excuse me, they put him on IR, it's not going to be anytime soon that we see Ekblad back. He won't be eligible to come back, Alex, till November 12th uh, against Edmonton at the very earliest. So we are talking about a long period of time that we're going to see Ekblad out uh, potentially here. And now Brandon Montour as well uh, is going to be out tonight for the uh, Panthers. So all of a sudden, you've got a shuffling of the deck chairs with the blue line. Mark Stahl is going to be paired with Gus Forsling uh, on the top pair. You're going to have Josh Mahura, Radko Gudis on the second pair and all of a sudden you got two very young players on your third pair Lucas Carlson and Matt Kirstead uh, for the uh, Florida Panthers so uh, definitely concerning <coughs> excuse me with their blue line uh, going into this game tonight uh, up <coughs> up front they're fine uh, no question about that <laughs> they've been pretty good uh, so far Philadelphia uh, on the other hand look on the second of back-to-back -back games we'll have to see how things go for them you know I think situationally I was looking at Florida uh, initially in this game, but you look at all of a sudden the defensive injuries that Florida's got going into this game tonight, and it's got me kind of pivoting to the over, believe it or not, in this game at six and a half. And I know Torts doesn't want him to play in a shootout. I get it. Right. But they're going to be fatigued. They're going to be on a back-to-back. -back. Florida is in a situation that I like overs. I like betting overs with totals when I'm dealing with teams with not just one but multiple defensemen out, especially yeah. key defensemen. And doesn't get more key than Aaron Ekblad. And Brandon Montour is pretty damn important to them as well. Very good veteran defenseman. So I think we're actually going to see some goals tonight uh, in this game. And I'm going to look at the over six and a half here with Philly and Florida. As far as the side goes, I could probably only look Florida. But here's the issue. Philly's got some magic going right now. And I know this is a tough spot. Back-to-back -back on the road. It's not easy to sweep these two games. Uh, and they had a big win against Tampa. Come back. Took a lot of energy out of them. But they've got some magic to them. You know, when they get down in a game, they don't give up. They showed that against Vancouver. They showed that again last night against Tampa. I'm not betting against that kind of karma, that kind of magic, that kind of special intangible that the Flyers have going right now. They've got confidence right now. I'm not betting against that at plus 290. I'm not going to do that. So that's why I'm passing on the side. I'm going to look toward uh, the total here over six and a half. Alex, what do you think here? Philly and Florida. It's a pass for me because initially this morning I was looking at under six and a half. But then now realizing, like you said, with these cluster injuries in Florida and also, you know, Felix Sandstrom is, is more than likely slated to start at the same time because it's early. They still could run with Carter Hart again. Uh, if I was looking at an under, I'd obviously would want Hart over Sandstrom. But Sandstrom, keep in mind, there's not a too far off drop from him. If you look at some of the games he started last year uh, in his debut, he actually ended up making 43 saves on a loss. He it was pretty sharp. Before he got hurt, right before uh, opening night, he was actually looking really well. And reports are indicating that he, you know he could be a solid backup and and had some uh, quality preseason starts. So. He's, you know, making that that turn. He's still a young guy, so I, the drop off for him it wouldn't be so massive. And especially with Florida having those injuries, you wonder if they're still going to try to play, uh, you know, like I said, that Paul Maurice cycle game, or are they going to try and, and, and open up and, and attack a little bit more? Now we saw, uh, you know, where in the Boston game it was five three, it was more of an open kind of style, you know, the typical Florida Panther hockey that we saw in years past, but. If they don't try to, you know, uh, press the action too much, be a bit more conservative, knowing that they have those issues uh, on the blue line, then it's kind of tough with that six and a half. So I'm just going to stay away from it. I, over makes sense if it was if we were talking about two healthy squads, but there's just a lot of issues and question marks here. So it's, it's a pass for me. He had a 3.23 <clears throat> goals against average last year with the Flyers, Felix Sandstrom. So if we get Sandstrom, 
Uh, that's uh, that was his number. Those were his numbers last year. We'll see if he's in net tonight. See the goalie that I think uh, in uh, Hearts obviously they, they they still think they hope he's still going to be the franchise goalie uh, for a long period of time. But I think next in line is not so much Sandstrom, especially from what I saw in the preseason. Um, it's the guy that was actually getting some starts in the preseason for the Flyers. The, the other Swedish goalie they have. I'm trying to think of his name now. I'm blanking oh, um, on it. Uh, Sam, Sam Urson, Samuel yeah. Urson. Mm-hmm, yeah. Uh, that's the that's the guy I think that's got the really good long term upside. Yeah, uh, for the Philadelphia Flyers. I think he was very good uh, in the preseason, but they don't want to rush him. They want to make him give him a lot of starts in the AHL down at Lehigh Valley, uh, and uh, give him that opportunity to flourish down there before they uh, bring him up to the NHL level. Uh, but Samuel Urson, uh, to me, is the is the guy that I think long term could be the uh, number two behind Hart for this team. Not that Sandstrom's not capable, but I think just long term, Urson might have a little more upside. But you mentioned it; Sandstrom had that great uh, one uh, first start he had last year. Kind of went a little up and down since then. But like I said, I think the bigger issue here is going to be Florida's defense should allow the Flyers maybe to be able to find the back of the net, and Florida can find the back of the net against anybody. Uh, we know that, and they're capable of doing that. And even though Florida, you know, is a team I've been thinking, maybe some unders other than the Islander game, and maybe that was more the Islanders, you know, they played 4 3 5 3 hockey, you know, in their other two games, uh, both of them seven plus goals, which would cash your over here. So uh, over for me here, six and a half with the uh, Flyers uh, and the uh, Panthers. Uh, keep an eye too on the uh, uh, lineups here in terms of uh, uh, the lineup combinations here. Uh, Travis Konechny is really feeling it early in the season for Philadelphia. So, you know, that's not a bad uh, option there in terms of uh, goal props. Uh, Kachuk is starting to get going. If you want to look down the board for a little value, uh, playing on the third line, he's already scored at least once this year. It's Lusterinen for uh, Cool Mint Lusterinen, mm-hmm. uh, as I like to say, mm-hmm. uh, for the uh, Florida Panthers. Uh, so he's someone that might offer a little value, in my opinion, here for the uh, goal score prop market. He's had a nice, uh, decent start to the year for the uh, Florida Panthers. Uh, and we'll see if he can keep that up tonight in this national TV game on TNT tonight uh, as they take on the Flyers. All right, next up, we've got the Jets uh, and the Avs. Uh, Colorado minus 230, home favorite, six and a half the total uh, in this one. Uh, very interesting in terms of this game from a total standpoint, because Winnipeg's gone to the under uh, in the first two games. And we kind of expected that with the uh, coaching change to Rick bonus wants to drill home better defensive play for this Winnipeg team. And that's clearly where they had their problems last year. Keeping the puck out of their net was constantly weighing them down their inability uh, to keep the puck out of the net. Uh, But so far this year, two and O to the under, they play a little bit better defensively. Uh, Dallas shut them down, though. What a great start for Dallas. They got a win against Winnipeg the other night, 4-1. to one. So one and one start for the Jets. Now they go to Colorado here, take on this uh, Avs team uh, tonight. Colorado, of course, playing just their second uh, home game uh, of the season. They opened the season at home against Chicago. Then they went on the road, and they split with Calgary and Minnesota uh, back home. All three games have gone over the total, and I can't say I'm shocked by that. I can't say I'm shocked by that because Colorado, to me, coming into this season, to me, they just didn't have that. And this t- actually shows you how well Darcy Kemper played for them last year in the regular season. To me, coming into this year, Alex, they just did not have that that goalie that we can count on consistently, night in, night out, game to game, period to period. I don't know yet if they've truly got that with Alexander Georgiev and Pavel Francouz. Francois was not very good in the one start he got uh, against Calgary. Uh, and uh, Georgiev was all right in the Chicago game. But again, Chicago didn't really pelt a lot of shots on him uh, that night. And then the Minnesota game, he was, he was all right, three goals, but not shut down or a lockdown performance in net by any stretch of the imagination. So, you know, that's kind of why I'm not shocked that they've gone over in all three games. We know this team is still lethal offensively. They're going to be able to score goals. They've got a dangerous power play. They're dangerous five-on-five at even strength. They've got scoring from multiple lines, even without Gabe Landeskog. And that was the big news today uh, for Colorado was that uh, Gabe Landeskog, uh, they were hoping he was going to be back in the next couple of weeks. That's now not going to be the case. He's undergone knee surgery, and now we're talking probably a minimum of three months to rehab that knee sur- knee for uh, Gabe Landeskog. So he'll be out. We won't see him again until probably late January. But that's what we're looking at right now in terms of the timeline for his return for the Avalanche. But again, you're not missing it. 
you're missing obviously what he does. He's the captain of the team, leadership, and he's good on in that in defense, both ends of the ice, defense and offense. But right. specifically for the offensive component, Arturi Lekkinen's been absolutely fine playing with uh, Nathan McKinnon uh, on the top line. And in fact, uh, Jared Bednar is making a little switch here. He's had Rantanen playing with McKinnon and Lekkinen a lot on the top line. Looks like Big Val uh, Nachushkin is going to get that uh, spot tonight uh, on the top line with Nate McKinnon and Arturi Lekkinen, while Ranton will go to the second line with Newhook and Evan Rodriguez, uh, Cogliano, Comfer, and O'Connor, uh, Anton Bleed, Jason Magna, Martin Kaut uh, going to be the uh, fourth line uh, for the uh, abs. And of course, we know the blue. I'm telling you what, good luck. Good luck trying to score on this blue line. Good luck trying to stop this blue line at the offensive end because we all know they, they can activate the defense. We all know there are defensemen that can get in on the – join the rush, get in on the play – uh, offensively, and they're all healthy right now, and it's the best blue line in the NHL, period, when they're all healthy. There's no question in my mind. There's no doubt in my mind uh, about that. Uh, it's just an outstanding uh, blue line. Taves, McCarr, Byram, Manson, Gerard, and Eric Johnson. I mean, that's just outstanding what they've got. So Winnipeg now coming into this game after the loss against Dallas. Uh, again, Mark Shifley, the one concern for the Jets is – you need more offense from some other guys. It's been basically the Mark Shifley show this season so far for the Winnipeg Jets. He's been excellent. Three goals in the first two games. I think you got to look at him from a prop standpoint tonight. If someone's going to contribute offensively for the Winnipeg Jets, you probably have to roll with Mark Shifley right now. And this is a good sign for Winnipeg long term because there were some questions about Shifley's commitment to the team, commitment to the franchise, whether he was happy. Uh, here in Winnipeg, especially after last year just ended dreadfully for him and the team. So Rick Bonus comes on board, and all of a sudden he's looking like he's got renewed energy. Uh, you know, he's back on the beam. He's enjoying playing for the Winnipeg Jets again, and certainly a great start. Three goals in the first two games for Mark Shifley. So pr probably that him be is a uh, Mark Shifley is probably a good uh, goal scorer prop option tonight. Connor uh, Ehlers, by the way. Uh, a little bit nicked up here. Game time decision for the uh, Winnipeg Jets tonight uh, due to, uh, we don't know. We think he blocked a shot the other night and was hobbled after that. We think it might have something to do with that, uh, but he's a game time decision night. They need more from that second line. Perfetti, PLD, uh, and Blake Wheeler. Uh, they've been pretty quiet so far for the Jets. So they need a little bit more out of them. Uh, I have a small I have a small lean to the over here, uh, honestly, six and a half. And the reason I do is because you look at series history. Uh, it's kind of trended that way, especially here in Colorado. Four and one, the last five have gone over. Four and one to the over the last five here in Denver. And you look at just uh, the, the meetings that these two teams played last year here uh, in Denver. Uh, you had a 7-1 Colorado win and you had a 6-3 uh, Colorado win at home. Both of those games flying over the total. So uh, I'm kind of looking in that direction here, over six and a half, nothing on the side. Uh, Alex, uh, what do you think here with Jets and Avs? Yeah, everybody in the chat's really got it uh, right on, on point with that. Both teams to score plus 150. And also looking at, there's only yep. a, Caesars, a is, Caesars is the only spot I'm seeing a two, and I'm seeing it with juice to the under at 140. So a two at plus 115 to plus 120, I would take a shot with as well. Uh, because obviously you're looking both both teams to score. If it goes one one, you at least uh, cash that both teams, and then you push on the two. But I think we could possibly see more than a couple of goals here because the way Colorado's is rolling right now, uh, you know they're playing their brand of hockey, and like I said, they can adapt to any style, but they'd rather uh, run you into the ground by by skating hard and fast and, and moving the puck and scoring uh, in bunches. And Winnipeg, you know their team, like I said, they they, they can counter for a period of time, but at some point, Colorado is going to just wear wear down on them, just like they did Minnesota, just like they did Chicago. And like I said, division games are always important to them as well. So, uh, with home crowd, they're going to be rocking and rolling. I, I like Colorado to uh, definitely win this game, but there's no way you can really bet them other than going for uh, some totals value. So, I like both teams to score plus 150, and I also like uh, that first period over two at plus 120 if you can find it. All right, so uh, I'm with you. On that first period, both teams to score. I'm in on that. I'm going to get in on that too because you look at the last year, these games, and early in some of those games in Colorado specifically, you know, the, 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 the Avalanche were a little bit asleep. I remember there was one of the games last year in Denver. Winnipeg was up two to one after the first period. 
You know, the Jets kind of jumped on Colorado early. You didn't get a great start to the game from the Avs. You know, I don't hate a Winnipeg first period look here in this game, honestly. I, 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 could, I could see the Jets, you know, being tied or having a lead even after the first period. But then sustaining it for 60 minutes has been impossible for Winnipeg uh, in Denver. You look at that game where they had that 2-1 lead last year after the first, Alex. They lost 5-4 uh, in overtime. Uh, the game There was another game, too, uh, where they had a 3-0 lead. They actually had a 3-0 lead uh, as well when they played in Denver last year after the first period. Colorado scored six unanswered after that and won 6-3. So there you go. I mean, you, it's a situation where we've seen Winnipeg start fast last year a couple times in Denver, but end up losing the game. So, And I could see that here because you do have Colorado out, coming off a mini two-game trip here, Calgary, Minnesota. And that's why it, it fits perfectly from a, from, a, from a thought process perspective with what we're all thinking. You know, you mentioned it, Alex. I'm on board. I agree with it fully. Uh, Jarek Rubel, our good friend Chris Otto, is doing a great job again with all those great uh, totals charts. We're all in that alignment with this first period, both teams to score, you know, at plus 150. You know, we all think that there's probably a decent chance the Jets can get on the board here in the first period, and you certainly have to expect Colorado at home always, you know. How, how many times is Colorado not going to score at least a goal in the first period at home? This year, it's probably not going to happen very much. So uh, that first period, both teams to score abs and jets tonight uh, definitely makes uh, some sense to me. I agree with that. And when you look at yesterday, we mentioned and we're going to start doing this on the show. These both teams to score first period bets. We went two and two. The four that we mentioned yesterday, we went two and two. We won with Boston, Ottawa. We lost with Anaheim, New Jersey. We won with Buffalo and Edmonton. Both teams scored in that first period and we lost with L.A. Nashville. But all four of those were plus price bets, all of them. So two and two means profit. You know, that means you came out ahead, you know, profitable uh, with that two and two on the four uh, looks that we recommended for the uh, both teams to score in the first period yesterday uh, on the uh, Tuesday card. So uh, definitely in agreement with that. Should be interesting to see how that game uh, plays out. All right. The uh, last game now of this Wednesday card. This is the second uh, of the TNT a double header tonight. We've got the uh, St. Louis Blues uh, taking on the Seattle Kraken. Pretty big line move towards Seattle because uh, St. Louis was definitely laying closer to my, plus minus 150, minus 160 even at one point uh, earlier uh, overnight and earlier this morning. And now we're seeing all of a sudden St. Louis minus 130 here, uh, road favorites, six being the total uh, across the board in this one. I think this could be a tricky spot for St. Louis. And I think Seattle, look, they've been kicked around a little bit. It's been kind of a disappointing start to the homestand here. And you would not expect this because, you know, Climate Pledge Arena is supposed to be giving this team a boost. And, you know, oftentimes last year, you know, they were able to, to step up and play some, some better games on home ice. And that hasn't happened here in their first two home games. In fact, their only win – uh, was against LA on the road, four to one. They're one and three so far. Zero uh, and two on this current homestand at Climate Pledge, losing five two to Vegas, five one to Carolina. However, pretty damn good hockey teams you're playing, especially Carolina. The one thing about that game is, yes, yeah, Seattle. You think where's their offense? You know, three goals in the two home games. Well, Vegas is playing pretty solid defensive hockey early in the year, and Carolina. I don't know if there's a team playing better defensive hockey than they are uh, to begin the year. They've been absolutely terrific. You know, at the defensive end of the ice, they've gotten a, ter a solid, sturdy goaltending from the uh, Frederick Anderson and uh, Antti Ranta a duo. Uh, Carolina has been just uh, on point, you know, in terms of their defensive uh, attention to detail uh, early in the season. So I don't want to penalize Seattle too much for only scoring one goal. I still think there's a better offensive hockey team. I mean, certainly roster-wise, personnel-wise, you'd have to say that they are. Uh, with uh, Matty Beneers now a full-time NHLer in the number one center spot. They bring in Andre Burakovsky and Oliver Bjorkstrand, who have already scored goals. Two goals, three assists for Burakovsky already this year. You talk about player props tonight. That's one I'm eyeing uh, here in this game. And didn't uh, Burakovsky, when he was with Colorado last year, play pretty well against St. Louis? I think he did. So uh, I think definitely Burakovsky is a good look for Seattle uh, in terms of uh, player props, whether it's to score a goal or register a point. Uh, I think that's definitely a good direction to go with here in this game. Uh, so I'd expect Seattle's uh, uh, 
goal scoring to get going a little bit here uh, in this game tonight. We do have goaltending confirmations here. Uh, by the way, it's Hellebuck and Georgiev. I forgot to mention that, but that's your goalie matchup confirmed for Winnipeg, Colorado. For this game, Jordan Binnington for Seattle, and it'll be Martin Jones back in net for Seattle. And I can't believe I'm living in a world where right now I've got two goalies on my hockey team, and I might have more confidence in Martin Jones. But that's where I'm at right now because, look, Philip Grubauer is having a tough time again. You know, and this is a guy that did not play well in year one with Seattle, and I was willing to give him a mulligan saying, okay, you're not playing with, you know, McCarr and Byram and D Devon Taves and all these great defensemen. You're playing against, you know, with a weaker blue line, less depth on it now. And he had a bad season, a, a rough season, and he struggled to adjust to it. But I said, okay, year two now, they're a little bit sturdier now as a franchise overall up front and on the blue line that maybe now Philip Grubauer can settle in, get comfortable, and get back to the way he played in Colorado. Maybe not quite that level, but to me, I came into this year thinking Grubauer isn't as good as he was in Colorado, but he's not as bad either as he was last year uh, in Seattle. And yet he's having a rough start. There's no other way around it. You know, he's fighting the puck. He's cop spitting up rebounds, uh, bad ones. He's got a 4.26 goals against average, 851 save percentage so far this season. Those are atrocious numbers. And I think if you're Dave Haxtall, you're in a spot right now where you've actually got to play Jones because I'm not long term. I don't think Martin Jones is going to sustain what he's done so far. Uh, you know, he's had a bad couple of seasons in a row. You know, long term, I think it's tough to count on him. But so far, he's been a little bit better than Grubauer, and that's probably why uh, Hackstall feels I got to give him the start tonight. And even his numbers are 3.6 goals against Alex and 882 save percentage. So it's not like those are off the charts numbers. Those aren't really good, but they're absolutely better than Grubauer's right now. So I, this is another one where I think you can make a case for the for the total here. I, we talk about St. Louis this year where they are not that same lockdown 2-1-3-2 team anymore. They're not. They, they've got offense. They've got a lot of offense. Robert Thomas, uh, Kloshev, Barbashev, Buchnevich, uh, Tarasenko. Uh, you go on down, Ryan O'Reilly, Auto Parts, Braden Shen, Brandon Saad, Jordan Cairo. I mean, this is now an offensive hockey team more than a defensive hockey team. We saw it last year. They get off to a nice start, 5-2. That game goes over the total. I was on that Blues and Blue Jackets over the total. Uh, on Saturday, I like over six here uh, with St. Louis and Seattle. I think this is a night where the Kraken can get on board offensively a little bit. I think you'll see St. Louis as a team defensively. Last year, they didn't play as well uh, in that end of the ice on the road. Neither did Bennington. Bennington was a little more shaky on the road, yep. even though he was good in the playoffs too last year. Let's not forget the regular season was mundane. The regular season was erratic in terms of Bennington's performance. So I think this is a night where Seattle gets their offense going a bit after playing tough teams that are playing good defense to start the year, Carolina and Vegas. I think they're going to have that opportunity to score tonight. And I think St. Louis, look, like I say, uh, I think offensively it's a damn good hockey team and I'm not going to totally rely on Martin Jones to shut the door completely. So uh, I like over six here, Blues and Kraken with a lean to Seattle here as well as a home dog. What do you think here, Alex? Blues, Kraken. Yeah, I'm right there with you on that over six. Uh, I like it a lot, especially now with Martin Jones confirmed. I get, yeah, he's he's been the better of the two goalies, but that's not saying much. And he's still not a guy you want to just fully trust in and that he's gonna, you know, play some lockdown, uh, you know, step defense and, and give you, you know, uh, a, a game where they win and he lets in two goals or fewer. I think uh, Jones is still susceptible. And Bennington, like you mentioned, his numbers on the road weren't that good. Uh, we know the inconsistency that he has put up during the regular season at times. So this screams to me over, but I only do I like the full game over six. I like the second period over at two minus a dollar ten. This is also over at Bet MGM where I found this. In 110 games played, 84 of them have had at least two or more goals in the in the second period. I got that uh, courtesy of Chris Otto with his charts. You can find that on Twitter and also on our Patreon uh, page, patreoncom guys. Uh, that we're seeing a change now where teams aren't getting off to the hot first period starts all the time. What they're doing is they're playing a bit more conservative early, trying to feel out things in the first 10, 15 minutes of play. And then they're making those adjustments in the locker room, coming back out and we're seeing the offense get ripping and roaring in the, in the, in the middle frame of the game. So I'm going to go with that over two minus the dollar 10. Another thing too, St. Louis, the one game they played 
13 shots for, 13 shots against uh, in that span. And Seattle has averaged uh, giving up over two goals in the second period as well. So second period over, two minus $1.10, full game over six minus $1.05. That's an excellent point. We're seeing a lot of games where the goal explosions are occurring in the second period and especially the third period. You know, we're seeing that a lot here in the first week of the season. So it's true. It may be, be a little more cautious or at least balance out your betting action between if you like overs the first period and more geared toward the full game overs uh, until we see, you know, signs that there's more uh, offensive uh, production taking place in the first 20 minutes uh, of these games. So uh, definitely something new. I'll keep an eye on and <laughs> excuse me. Yes. Burakovsky. Uh, definitely, like I say, one of the props. I think Beniers might get on the board too. He's got uh, only one goal, but he does have four points so far uh, this season for the uh, Seattle Kraken. I think he's probably a solid candidate to uh, get on the uh, score uh, sheet for the uh, Kraken tonight uh, in this game, or at least get on uh, maybe find the uh, back of the net specifically here uh, in this uh, game tonight. St. Louis is always one of those teams where really, you know, you could go in a bunch of different ways with them uh, in terms of uh, offensive. Uh, production it's different every single night maybe even Jaden Schwartz for Seattle because we know that former team angle right Jaden Schwartz many years with the uh, St. Louis Blues now a member of the uh, Seattle Kraken so maybe uh, Jaden Schwartz is able to find the back of the net too it's it's uncanny how often that happens really when you've got look at Frank Vetrano the other night for the New York uh, for the Anaheim Ducks against the uh, New York Rangers he scored one of their goals former Ranger now with the Ducks and he scored uh, against New York. It's just something about it. When you're facing your former team, you want to make an impact. So maybe Jaden Schwartz uh, gets on the board uh, as well for the uh, Kraken uh, tonight in that game. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, when uh, again, I said it about the uh, Blues that, you know, it's just pretty impressive how so many different players can uh, be a difference maker uh, for them uh, on a, a nightly basis. And we had two goals from Tarasenko and He's probably the one I like the most here tonight, goal scoring prop wise for the Blues, because he's a streaky scorer. Like he could go, you know, in a five, six game tailspin, not do much. But then when he's going, you can ride Vladdy Tarasenko for like five, six games in a row with him to score a goal. And he got two uh, in the game against uh, Columbus uh, on Saturday night for the uh, St. Louis Blues. So, you know, that is why I think he might be worth a look tonight. I say Jake Neighbors as well. Hello, Neighbors. Uh, Oh, won't you be my neighbors, Jack neighbors, uh, Jake neighbors, I should say, for uh, the uh, St. Louis Blues. I think there's some serious under the radar bargain bin prop value with this guy. I think he's going to be a nice, nice addition to this Blues roster and just another weapon. Sees the ice well, uh, no question about that. So uh, keep an eye on him for sure. Uh, Jake neighbors here for the uh, St. Louis Blues. He also scored a goal in the uh, victory uh, against uh, Columbus. Uh, and uh, even though he's on the third line with Shen and Barbashev, very, very offensively capable. And don't sleep on him. And in fact, I'm going to bring up the uh, price before we uh, sign off here, uh, specifically on neighbors, because I know you're going to be able to get a really, really good uh, price with him in terms of uh, scoring a goal here tonight in this game. Yeah, with Jake Neighbors, you can get as high as plus 425, plus 450 to score a goal tonight. Wow. Uh, Jake neighbors. I think that's worth a couple of bucks. You know, these are the nights where I, I'm a little more, I, I expand the bankroll when it comes to the props because it's a limited card. There's only three games. So I will sprinkle a bit more on props than I will on a bigger card, like a Tuesday or a Thursday. So Jake neighbors to me for St. Louis, absolutely outstanding um, a price there at plus four fifty at some books to score a goal tonight uh, for the uh, St. Louis Blues. All right, great stuff. A great show, great uh, analysis. Thanks to everyone uh, in the uh, chat for joining us. As always, we appreciate it. Hit the like button if you haven't done so uh, already. We've got Mike Hamilton played in the ECHL uh, for a long time. Uh, he will be joining us tomorrow, and he's a avid better as well. And not hockey, football, you name it. Uh, so good to have Mike Hamilton on for the first time uh, tomorrow on the uh, Ice Guys show on Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern. We'll have... Nate Rapensky was with us once on the in the playoffs last year. He'll be joining us Friday. Kyle Bond, same thing. He was on during the playoffs with, I think it was Vito and I that were with Kyle Bond last year during the playoffs. Mm -hmm. uh, he will be with us on Saturday with me, Alex, and Vito on Saturday's show. Uh, so we are very much uh, looking forward to that. 
uh, breaking down a big Saturday uh, NHL card. We're going to move that show back to 12.30 p.m. Uh, Eastern time, just because Kyle said that's when he'll be uh, ready to go. So 12.30 p.m. Uh, Eastern time on Saturday. And, and don't forget, next Tuesday, first live betcast uh, of uh, the season for the Ice Guys at 7 p.m. Eastern time. We're very much looking forward to that. It'll be a big Tuesday slate. The Daily Show that day next Tuesday, we got Jay Rosehill on for the first time uh, as well uh, at 2 p.m. Eastern for the Tuesday show uh, during the day. So uh, lots to look forward to here. I'm still waiting on our uh, Jimmy, Jimmy Murphy. I mean, I'm waiting on him to get back to me. When do you want to be on the show, my friend? I mean, you're welcome anytime, but we'll get Jimmy on. Jimmy's busy. Jimmy's taken over as Boston Hockey now, lead dog, if you will. Uh, and he's doing a traveling with the team pretty much again, uh, the Bruins again. So, uh, you know, it's time consuming. It is. But we will have Jimmy on the show. Uh, no question about that. Whenever it fits his schedule, we will get Jimmy Murphy uh, on the ice, guys. No question about that. And uh, I put on uh, some of the – well, put the links in the in the chat as well. We'll have, you know, uh, of course, follow us on Twitter at the underscore ice guys. I put, uh, you know, Ian at Bobano, me at AX Sports. Because, uh, you know, we got a whole lot of new people that are watching and so forth. And definitely check out our Patreon page, patreon.com slash ice guys. We got a bunch of bonus content. I just updated my goalie charts on there. Uh, we're going to start doing some some bonus videos coming up soon. Tomorrow's the release of the reverse retro jerseys uh, by Adidas. So I will be ranking those 1 through 32. And I'm going to do a video talking about those. Uh, and then we got some other uh, fun things that are coming up down the road. And uh, we're going to also do some charts. We're also going to start tracking these streaks of these player props, goals and points, shots on goal, how many games in a row. We'll have those charts up there in the next few days as well. So there's a ton of, of, of good information and some fun stuff mixed up along the way. Patreon.com slash ice guys. Yeah, absolutely. Check out the Patreon page. It's uh, loaded with, with content uh, every day. Power ratings from me weekly, goalie charts, uh, totals charts, uh, daily card for the show. Uh, make sure you check that out. And we have good news, too, from a guest standpoint. Uh, some of the guests that, uh, you know, I sent out a mass email, everybody, you want to join us again on the show, let us know. And we've got interest from a lot of people. I mean, Eddie Lack wants to join us again at some point this year. Carl Alsner, Bobby Ryan wants to join us again this year at some point. So, uh, looking forward to uh, having them back on the show as well. So we got lots of stuff planned on the show with the Patreon page, BetCasts, uh, you name it, the merch store. Don't sleep on that as yeah, well. Uh, the Ice Guys yeah, merch free shipping for the next five days uh, yeah. if you buy everything at, at iceguys.myspreadshop.com. Yeah, there you go. Check that out. Great merch there uh, to uh, get you uh, set for another season of the NHL and, of course, another season of the Ice Guys show. All right, let's try to get you set with some more Best Bet winners uh, here for this uh, card about bounce back for me the Canucks root wrecked my street wrecked my streak in cruel fashion painful fashion on Monday night uh, but I got back on track last night flames in regulation we'll see what we can deliver tonight uh, for best bets here with this very short three game card Alex we'll start with you what do you like for best bet yeah bounce back for you I got to turn the whole fucking car around it's been pretty bad for my best bets but I'm hoping to do that tonight here with uh, St. Louis and Seattle we're going to go over six minus a dollar five uh, I talked about you know the goaltending uh, it's a bit spotty you know Bennington and Jones they aren't exactly the pillars this isn't uh, Shesterkin and Vasilevsky from opening night by any means I think both these teams are susceptible to getting some goals and uh, training back and forth so we would go with the Blues and Kraken over six minus a dollar five that's the late night game for my best bet all right, there it is. St. Louis, Seattle, over six. Best bet here for uh, Alex B. Smith. Uh, my best bet for this uh, Wednesday card, it's uh, tricky with just the three games. It's one of those nights where I don't love anything, but I like, you know, a couple of things. I'll go with the I'll go with the Winnipeg, Colorado, uh, over six and a half uh, in this one. I'm just based, it's really strictly series history related. We saw 7-1 and we saw 6-3 uh, in the last two uh, meetings between the Jets and the Avs last year in Denver. Both of them flew over the total. Uh, I could see that being the case here tonight uh, in this uh, matchup. And again, Colorado 3-0 and to the over this season. They've scored goals in bunches, but I'm not sold yet on the georgiev Francois combo. Georgiev, by the way, will be the starter in net tonight. So let's go with Jets-Avs over 6.5. Uh, for my best bet here for this uh, Wednesday uh, NHL card. All right, that'll wrap up this edition uh, of the Ice Guys. That's a great point, Poe Buddies Nerf it before we say goodbye. Self-imposed ban on the Canucks. You got to bet one of those damn teams tomorrow night playing each other. Neither one can get out of their way defensively, get out of their yeah. own way defensively <laughs> right now. Canucks and what? Well, maybe just bet the over in that game. 
but personally. Probably. But uh, we'll probably get to that tomorrow on the Thursday show. It is a loaded card tomorrow. We're looking forward to it with our guest, Mike Hamilton, joining us as well. Uh, we've got 12 games uh, to look forward to uh, on the Thursday slate, and we will break them all down for you tomorrow right here on the Ice Guys show. Uh, we appreciate all of you tuning in. And a reminder, the Ice Guys is live seven days a week, Monday to Friday, 2 p.m. Eastern, Saturday and Sunday, noon Eastern. If you can't watch the show live, download the Ice Guys podcast in audio form on all major podcast platforms, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music. Uh, check out uh, the podcast on all those platforms whenever you cannot tune in live. For Alex B. Smith, I'm Ian Cameron. Have a great Wednesday night. Enjoy the games and good luck. And we will talk to you again tomorrow on Thursday for another edition of the Ice Guys presented by National Hockey Now. Mm-hmm.